well, it looks like more shutdowns may be coming. Wyoming hasn't instituted anything yet, but I know other states are getting ready or have already started another lockdown phase, so we are getting prepared. Even if you're super isolated like we are, grocery stores still get weird, things go out of stock, shipping times are delayed, and we were caught a little off guard this spring, and I'm not gonna be caught off guard again. So in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly what we've been doing slowly and kind of methodically over the summer and fall to just prepare ourselves a little bit more. And honestly, having a little bit of food on hand and being prepared is a really good idea regardless of what phase of history we're in. Okay, first things first, oils and fats. It's a big one. We do have milk cows that give us some butter, but another thing that I use a ton of is coconut oil. I get five gallons at a time. So I keep the five gallon bucket down in my basement and then I fill up this small white bucket as we need it. Ooh, and the other fat I depend on heavily is lard. Now I render my own lard. I ask butchers to save the leaf fat for me from pigs or when we butcher our own pigs, we save the fat and I render it down. I have tutorials for that here on YouTube and on my blog, so I'll link those. And you just can't beat it because it's really, really cheap when you render it yourself. We all noticed there was this bizarre flower shortage this spring. And I don't know if that'll happen again, but regardless, I want to be prepared just in case. I do have some extra bags of all-purpose flour saved up, but I am relying heavily on my grain mill, and I've had this grain mill for years. Now, the benefit of a grain mill in times like these is that you can purchase wheat berries, which are just the whole wheat pieces, and those will store for years and years without going bad. So if you wanna buy a 50 pound bag of wheat berries, keep it in your pantry or in your basement, and as long as you have a grain mill of some sort, you can grind that up and use it for flour. Now, the only downfall with this is that grain mills are sold out across the country because a lot of people are having the same idea. So if you can't get your hands on a grain mill, you could also get a grain mill attachment for your KitchenAid mixer, or if you have a high-powered blender like a Blendtec or a Vitamix, you can use those to grind smaller amounts of wheat as well. I am making sure my sourdough starter is active and ready to roll. Now I had them in the fridge all summer, but I brought it back out, reactivated it, and I'm starting to make more breads in the event that yeast is sold out and also bread is sold out. I had a hard time finding dry beans in bulk, so I just bought smaller packages whenever I went to the store throughout the summer, and I have a pretty good supply. Now, I like to buy dry beans versus canned beans because I know exactly what's in them. I have less waste I have to throw away in the garbage, and they're really not hard to cook up, especially if you have an Instant Pot. Okay, I think the rest of the things I wanna show you here in the house are down in my basement pantry. It's not glamorous, but it works. Okay, I'll go give you a walkthrough of what we have down here. In these cardboard boxes, I have our potato harvest. You saw me talk about those in a previous video, how we store those and why we store those down here. We have spaghetti squash. We grew extra of that in the garden, much to my children's dismay. They hate spaghetti squash for some reason. We have our garlic, homegrown. What else do we have over here I wanna show you? We have our big giant bucket of coconut oil. I have some rolled oats here in this bucket. I think I got these from Azure Standard, which is a food co-op that you can buy in bulk from. We have some organic evaporated cane sugar. I think I got a bag of that from Costco. I hope you can appreciate all of the creative prowess that went into the labeling of my buckets. It's pretty classy. Down here we have some more sweetener. It's a granulated brown cane sugar, pinto beans, navy beans, and my personal favorite, a giant bucket. It was about 25 pounds worth of awesome sea salt. I use a lot of salt in my fermenting and my cooking, so I went and just splurged on a 25 pound bag from Redmond's. I'll drop a link for them in the show notes. It was one of the best purchases of the year, I think. Okay, a few other things I have down here that I bought extra of this year. We bought extra maple syrup because this really doesn't expire, I don't think. Or at least, it doesn't expire for quite a while. Another go-to sweetener we depend on is honey. I was so thrilled to find a local beekeeper this year. He was selling these pails of honey, so I stocked up on a couple of those. Honey is not gonna go bad, so this will probably last me, I don't know, well over a year. And then my favorite part, the giant wall of canned food. 
I can every year, regardless of what is happening with the world, but this year I canned extra. We had a pretty good tomato year, so we did extra sauce, so I won't have to buy that at the store. The cucumbers went gangbusters, so we did relish and lots of pickles. I found some semi-local peaches at the farmer's market, so we stocked up on those. We also canned some pumpkin to be used in pies and breads. As far as our dairy products go, we've been milking cows for a long time and we have had those regardless of COVID or not. One of the big changes we did this spring, you might have seen the video on it, is that we built a little bit nicer milking parlor and we invested in a milking machine. Part of that was for ourselves to make it a little bit easier, but we also did that in case we decide to sell milk in the future or if there's a need for us to supply friends and neighbors with milk, we can have a cleaner and more efficient process to do that. So if I could pinpoint one weakness in our preparations, I think our fruit and vegetable supply is probably the thing that's most lacking. I mean, yes, we have canned fruit and vegetables and I have some extra frozen ones out in the big freezer, but honestly, that's the area I struggle with the most, which is why we did build a greenhouse this year, even though I'm not really sure how to use it correctly yet. And we're experimenting with growing greens and certain cold weather crops well into the winter. So that is our step in the right direction in that regard, but we're still not where I'd like to be quite yet. Now, in addition to food, building up our immune systems and keeping our bodies healthy is also really important. So we have stocked up on a few supplements and things like that that will keep us proactive in our health. Two things that we try to take every day are lipospheric, vitamin C, and glutathione. Elderberry syrup, we have lots of herbal teas on hand. I have been a long time user of essential oils and essential oil supplements, so I have plenty of those on hand as well. I use doTERRA products, and the ones that we've been using the most during this phase of life are On Guard Soft Gels and DDR Prime Soft Gels. Vitamin D is one I've seen some really interesting studies about in relation to different viruses, so we do have a vitamin D supplement. Along with a good probiotic, we're also upping our fermented food intake. So we have sauerkraut bubbling away over here and the kids are trying to eat a spoonful a day. We also have our crock of continuous brew kombucha. Okay, I think that's everything I can think of here in the house. I'm gonna take you out to the freezers and show you around out there. We have a number of freezers. We have a couple residential freezers and a commercial freezer where we keep the beef that we sell commercially. So after we saw the meat shortages, we took a couple of actions this summer. We had a little extra beef butchered. Now we grow our own beef, so that wasn't too complicated other than finding a butcher wasn't easy. If you don't grow your own beef, just find a farmer or rancher or a friend and see if you can buy beef in bulk from them. We also raised six pigs not all for us, but we teamed up with some friends. We raised a pig and a half for us and we split the other pigs among them to make sure they all had pork for the year. And we raised extra meat chickens. Normally we raise one batch, this year we raised two. Eggs were something we definitely saw shortages of. In fact, a local grocery store actually bought some eggs from me because they were so short, which was kind of cool in a roundabout way. Anyway, we were able to help out friends and neighbors by selling them eggs this spring. So we did increase our flock size a little bit. The bad news is that the days are shorter now. So the chickens have stopped laying at the pace they were. So we have less eggs. Now we can remedy that by turning on the light bulbs in here, but it is a bummer to have only a couple of eggs a day versus 15. Thankfully, I know that will reverse in the spring, if not sooner, so we're just gonna ride that out. So not only do we need to make sure we have enough food stocked up for ourselves in case of a shutdown, we also have to make sure the animals have enough to eat too. We always buy our hay in bulk, usually in late summer or early fall, just because I like knowing that our horses and our cattle will have enough to eat throughout the winter and I won't have to scramble to find more. And we greatly prefer large bales because they're easier for us to handle since we have the equipment to move them around. We feed our chickens a lot of table scraps, but they still need some sort of chicken feed to supplement them. So we've been getting that in bulk as well. We have a local feed store who mills it 
They put it into these bags and we get it a pallet at a time. I was finishing up the edits on this video today and I just want you to know what I shared throughout this little bit of time together. These are just the things that we're doing. They're a part of the lifestyle that we've chosen for the last decade. And I understand 100% that not everyone can have greenhouses and cattle and gardens and the whole nine yards. But if there's one thing you take away from this video, please be encouraged and know that every single one of you can do something to be more in charge of your food supply, to have better food security, to have more of a role in where your food comes from, or just to opt into better local choices that aren't as volatile and aren't going to be as shaky in the event of something crazy like, I don't know, a worldwide pandemic. So whether it's canning or growing herbs in your windowsill or just getting to know whole food ingredients instead of relying on pre-packaged processed options, those are all simple things you can do. And the cool thing is, we do them out of a place of joy and fulfillment, not out of fear. And that's a really good feeling. Chill, 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 chill. Okay, it's okay. okay. <laughs> I can't. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want... Hold on.